Hey guys, welcome to season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge. In case you haven't guessed it, we're gonna be eating bear. Stay tuned, find out how we got this guy. Hey guys, welcome to season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge. I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm the Wooded Beardsman. The goal of the challenge is to gain or maintain body weight. We've already weighed in and we're only eating wild food. Bear, beaver, duck, grouse, and more. This season's gonna be a blast. Oh man guys, I forgot. Updates twice a week every Tuesday and every Friday. There's gonna be a playlist in the description and the pinned comment. Don't rely on YouTube to notify you, but you can always try. Hit that bell icon and maybe they'll let you know. All right, so there's a little bit of a story how I met Rob. Rob's moving tired because he doesn't want to be on camera, <laughs> but I'm gonna give him credit because he's owed, he's owed credit. So you've been out, how many times, you, or how many times have you baited this spot here? Ooh, about eight or 10 visits maybe. Yeah. Something like that. And you bring in like a pail. Two or three uh, gallons of donuts. Uh, some crab apples that have been scattering around. Yeah. Uh, the crab apples I find uh, uh, from the pictures anyway. It keeps them meandering around, spending some time, getting used to the spot. Yeah, and I brought a couple apples up and did my contribution to the to the work. But yeah, I've been at it for, for a long time, right? It's not a simple thing. You just throw a bait out, bear comes. No. It's, uh, it's like training a dog, right? You got to put it out, you put a little bit out, and then they come back. Um, and we're getting rid of a bear that would en end up in somebody's garbage bin, right? Yeah, we're not actually that far from uh, no uh, populations. Yeah, exactly. We're just we're not we're outside of a fairly big uh, city, and these bears are always running into people. And if we can take another one out, we will. So all um, Rob's done is he's thrown a couple logs on there. I don't know if you want to show them how it's done. It's just a it's well, a barrel, right? It's a barrel with a hole cut in it, and uh, we toss the logs on it to keep. Uh, the uh, the raccoons and the foxes and the smaller critters out of there so they're not eating the bait while uh, we're waiting for the bears to come in. Yeah. And then the bears come in, they tear it apart and they spend time in there and hopefully they come back tomorrow for some more. This, this, this long story is Rob actually made it out to uh, Puddle Lake and that's where we met. We kind of kept in touch since then and he, I asked him about baiting and he said, yeah, you would do it because he wanted a little bit of adventure, I think. But how did you find Puddle Lake? From a map, did you find it like we did? We and just we, went? we followed some snowshoe tracks uh, one winter. We went to- Ours maybe. No, not yours. No? <laughs> some guys had gone by on a snowmobile. Yeah. And we went to go see how their fishing was at the other end of the lake we were on. And there was no people there. There was just tracks off into the bush. And two weeks later we come back and we, uh, we followed them and we found Puddle Lake. And then a couple of years later we ran into you guys. They call it something else though. You guys call it Billy? Me, uh, we call it Goat Lake. Goat Lake, because you have to climb a big mountain, right? Yeah. So it's quite the trek in there. So we we were quite surprised to find you guys in there. <laughs> yeah, that that was the funny thing was we were just hanging around and all of a sudden he comes out and his buddy comes out and we're like, what is going on? And that was actually our last time we went to our uh, our um, hot tent trip. And mm -hmm. so you're you're pretty impressed by your hot tent, right? Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah and they spent pretty the, envious. Yeah, and they spent the night on the lake. Uh, adjacent, right? Which yeah. is uh, anyway, without giving out way too much information about the system, but uh, you found it from hard work, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's a hard it's work. It's a little bit of hard work every time. Exactly. All right, guys, let's get this bear fixed up. Tree branch or a log. I'm fully promoted here. All right, guys, so hopefully we got a bear down. Whew. Now we got to do the tracking job.
the tree stands back up here. There's a tree stand here. The bait's right here. So see if we can find it. Rob says he found it. Oh yeah, I was pointing to the right spot. It's dead. <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> did I get you? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, I think I did get you a little bit. <sighs> Got ourselves a bear. So that's how you live off the wilderness. <clears throat> Big game animals. That's going to feed us for a while. <laughs> Take a side. So actually we're not going to show all this on camera obviously but uh, Jeremy's got a good video on his channel so I'll, if you guys want to keep watching a bear skinning video zip over to his it's actually really it's a it's it's a full detail it's like 45 minutes or something right yeah it's pretty long it's a long one but if you want to learn how to do it that's the place to go I'm not gonna bore you with the details all right guys so I'm gonna give you a little bit of update I can't show you I'm sorry but I can't show you all the processing we've been doing we um We've been working hard for probably two, three, four hours now, something like that. And uh, we're getting it done. So we're just working over in the shop here. Um, Jeremy's skinning out the bear. Adam's skinning out the beaver. Uh, the, the reason is because Jeremy wants to actually keep the, the bear. And Adam wants to keep the beaver. So we're on uh, Jeremy's homestead here. Um, yeah, I, I'll show you as much as I can. Uh, I'll link over to the Uncensored channel and you guys can take over over there. It's not something that I can... You know, most people want to see, but it's the diehard truth. Like, if you are going to go eat wild foods, you 100% need to be in there, you know, getting your hands messy. So, uh, Zach's up from uh, Maine. He took 11 hours drive to get here. And, uh, yeah, we're just finishing up before we head out. We might go on another bear hunt because we have one scheduled. It's kind of our backup plan. So, take you to show you a little bit of the pelts here now. So, there's... Uh, Jeremy almost done. There's Zach. He's in full force now. And there are two beavers skinned out. So those are Adam's prize for all that work. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit of work for uh, 30 know. bucks worth of beaver pelt. You see the bear, it's got quite a bit of uh, fat on there and that's the fat that we want. We're gonna try to render that stuff out. You can see you know it's got a good layer not a big thick layer it's not a huge bear but uh it'll do for us so before we uh quarter this up we're just taking the fat off and we can render it this is like the most important part of the whole challenge is getting that buckets of fat so the best way to do it is just while it's hanging you can see uh back here look at that big chunk of fat the most rarest thing in uh wilderness living uh, survival or thriving is that fat that you want so we're probably going to be freezing this up quartering it freezing it because uh the real challenge doesn't start where we actually try to live off this stuff until the day after tomorrow today was a bit of an experiment i wanted to see if i actually actually put this all together um because as you know there are no guarantees when we're out you know trying to catch these things it could have taken us eight days it could have taken us nine days it could have taken us forever you know i i went spring bear hunting with adam he set up a bait and i did it for six days and I never got anything. The bear disappeared, got shot by somebody else. Same thing could have happened here. That's why I double booked. And uh, we've got a guy uh, coming with dogs. His name's uh, Matt. And uh, he actually will set us out with dogs. He'll chase, he'll chase, um, he'll chase a bear up in a tree. So we're probably gonna do that tomorrow. And that was a plan B. Plan A worked out, but we're still gonna follow through with it because I had made a commitment to Matt. And I do want to show what he does. So anyway, we got all the food we need. I still have my apples I brought from home. Um, if you guys are just tuning in, you got to go back to the start and figure out what we did. But uh, we're looking in really good shape. And I want to go after smalls now. I want to go after duck, grouse, geese, fish. So that's the next step. Okay, so we're all packed up. We got, uh, is that the bear fat on top, Zach? That? Yeah. That's the bear fat. Look at that bear fat. That's what... 10? 10? 10 pounds? Yeah, I'd say so. 10 pounds. Uh, we could probably just eat that and we'd be good. 
Yeah. Yeah. Just I'm game. Fat. I'll just eat just, bear fat just, the whole time. You can you process that? Uh, I can right now because I'm doing the ketogenic diet. So, so you can eat if, I think at first I would probably feel a little cruddy and a little laggy because that's just a lot. But <laughs> so it would mess you up if you eat apples and berry fat. Do you think maybe the sugar might mess you up? I know. I think the sugar would make you feel hung over the next day a little bit. So yeah. you'd feel like you're dragging. So it, you're gonna try to go without the apples then, maybe. I'll have a little bit of apple here and there, like as a dessert and things like that, but not enough that will throw me out of a ketogenic state is my intention. Yeah. You know, so. How much meat do we have? We got a lot. Like we're going to take half this bear, half the bear, maybe a beaver, maybe two. We'll have to decide. We're going to have to have a little decision making process. Right. Here. I'm thinking half the bear and, and a beaver. And then we try to catch everything else that we can while we're out there. Right. Yeah. And we'll cook it. Yeah. So Fish fried in bear fat. There's their one pile, we got leg, 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 like that's the whole pile there. And then there's another pile over here of, uh, that's all the beaver meat here. So the beaver netted out a little bit smaller than the bear, obviously, but two beaver. So now we are going to throw this in the freezer because uh, we have a commitment tomorrow to go hunt with uh, dogs. So you'll have to join us for that. But that's, uh, that's the first leg of the journey, right? Um, Jeremy, I'm going to call Jeremy a couple times. <laughs> Zach, um, missed the, the the main part like i guess the the, the first know, hunt the first first hunt little bit first trap. but it was because of uh logistics right i needed um adam's actually going off to work way up north and uh rob the guy who baited the stand he's uh he's back in work too and he, he's, he was willing to put one day in otherwise it was up to us so yeah there's still a little, there's still another bear there so right we could go we can get three <laughs> i just see bear meat and bear fat right but uh yeah so looking good, uh, excited, Zach? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, do you feel good, like where where you are in Canada? Like you yeah. feel oriented a little bit yet, or still? You no, know, it's it's so much like home, you know. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a lot like Maine. It's the only thing is, is it's really flat. And uh, when I first showed up in Canada, everybody was speaking Canadian, and, <laughs> and I couldn't understand it. No, Fre speak French. Speaking French because that's the French side <laughs> over that way, and so I couldn't read the signs or anything. And then the GPS was cutting out, so I'm like, "This is a long ways to go with no GPS." <laughs> I don't even know if I remember how to read a map without my phone. <laughs> yeah, he came through Quebec, so yeah, it's all French there. Yeah, and then you get to Ontario, and like, well, okay, we'll give. We'll do a little bit of French, but not too much. Yeah. And then all of a sudden this morning, just like an hour and a half away or so, the signs all changed to English pretty yeah. much. And I was like, oh. You're in Ontario now. Yeah. But I was surprised. It's all rolling hills. Yeah, it's hilly. It's just like there's, there's no mountains. There's like no no big mountains. Not that I've seen so far. No. Do you guys? No, no big mountains. Yeah, I haven't looked at the map. Like, no. Topographically. No, it's pretty flat. Uh, lots of trees. Rolling yeah. hills. Yeah, all the trees are a lot shorter. Yeah. Like trees are one third the height that they are in Maine, basically. Oh. Everywhere. Yeah, well, yeah. you're in Northern Ontario, so the trees are a little shorter. Yeah, just maybe because the winters are colder. Yeah. And then colder. when we go up, we go up four hours north of here, you'll see that they change from deciduous to um, coniferous. Yeah. Yeah, so that's like obviously the climate. Even four hours north of here, it changed again. Yeah. So where we'll be, it'll be completely different. So on to the next step. Yeehaw. Never yeah. Never eating the beaver either. Nope, never eaten a beaver. First Looking time. forward to it though. Welcome to Canada. Right?